Hello, this is Lindsay from Have Clothes Will Travel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Saruni Samburo Lodge in Kenya. There's a good chance you haven't heard of this lodge before. It's a bit of a hidden gem and hasn't been marketed as heavily as some of the other safari lodges in Kenya. But this video is going to show just how unbelievable Saruni Samburo is and why it absolutely deserves to be on your bucket list. From the jaw-dropping accommodations and the once-in-a-lifetime safari experience, Saruni Samburo will knock your socks off. I'm going to walk you through our stay here and explain what you can expect if you decide to stay here yourself. Saruni Samburo is one of the coolest places I've ever been to in my life. And to put this in perspective, I was coming from Giraffe Manor in Nairobi before I stayed here, which I didn't think anything was going to top Giraffe Manor, but Saruni rose to that challenge and just might have won. This place is that incredible. Saruni Samburo is a safari lodge that features only six luxury villas, and they're open and large and have spectacular views of the Kalama Conservancy, which is a private conservancy. Saruni is the only lodge on over 200,000 acres of wilderness, so it's pretty secluded. Even getting to the Saruni Samburo Lodge is an adventure. There isn't an actual road to get to the lodge, you're basically driving up the side of a rocky mountain to get to the entrance. Our guide joked that this is the Saruni Highway, and now we can say we've gone rock climbing with a jeep. When we arrived, the staff greeted us with a cold fruity drink and showed us the magnificent dining area and views. I never got tired of this view. We had stayed in villa number three for three nights, which again, there are only six villas total at Saruni Samburu, and two of these villas are also large family villas for those traveling with kids. Our villa was a bit of a hike from the main lodge, or at least it felt like it because it was always quite warm in Samburu. Every day we were there, it was over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. There are a couple of villas that are a little closer to the main lodge, though if you're worried about having to walk a long distance to your room. And the rooms are built on the side of a cliff and around a gigantic volcanic rock face. They are very open and spacious and blend into the natural surroundings. I keep saying rooms, but rooms is also really not an accurate way to describe what you're staying in here. These are basically little houses, and they are huge. You'll also have a living room area with a dining table and a sitting area and also a nice outdoor lounge area. There is also a full jug of water in your room so you can fill up your water bottles easily and without having to head back to the lodge. And they also provide you with your own reusable water bottles, which I thought was really nice. You can even request to have your meals in your own dining room for a private dining experience. We always had ours in the dining area of the lodge, but this was a nice option to have if you wanted a more private experience. Then you have a separate bedroom area with a very nice sized closet and also a refrigerator, which this is nice because Sambru is hot all the time. So having the option to have cold water in your room is nice. They also provide you with a hair dryer, a safe, bug spray, and lanterns for at night. Saruni Samburu also has a limited laundry service, which means you can have your clothing washed here for no additional charge. Just note though they won't however wash women's underwear, which is a standard with many of the lodges in Kenya. And this laundry service is great because you're only allowed 33 pounds per person on your flight into Samburu. My camera gear by itself weighed 17 pounds, so I didn't have much for clothing or toiletries packed. My husband and I each just had a duffel bag for our clothing and that was it. They also provide laundry detergent for you at Saruni Samburu if you'd like to just hand wash your own clothing in the bathroom sink, which again, I thought this was really nice. Speaking of the bathroom, look at this bathroom. How incredible is this? You have a dumple sink in here, a toilet plus a bidet. You also have this huge soaking tub, but the best part of this room is the outdoor shower. This shower also has hot and cold water all day long. I mean, look at this view. They also provide you with these fantastic organic hair and body products that I'm kicking myself for not buying some of these from the gift store as they worked really well and smelled fantastic. I loved this room. Saruni Samburo also has this beautiful infinity pool that you can lounge at during the day in between your game drives. There is also a second pool which is up higher and has some incredible panoramic views. You also might have some visitors, as the local monkeys and baboons like to come hang out by the pool as well. There's also a spa area here where you can get facials and manicures and massages. Each room also gets a complimentary 30-minute massage, 
My husband took this as I'm usually not the biggest fan of massages and he said it was a really nice massage. At night, there's also beanbag chairs that you can use to watch the stars. And Benson, who's the head waiter, is also a really passionate astral guide and can show you the different planets and galaxies and stars and constellations with his laser pointer. And he really knows his stuff. The accommodation and the amenities aren't even the best part of staying here though, in my opinion. The best part is the incredible staff and our guide, Simon. All of the guides here are some Barul warriors who are very passionate about their land and culture. Every guest we spoke with at Saruni was convinced that their guide was the best guide and they felt lucky for having them. So I think it's safe to say that all of the guides at Saruni are amazing, but I'm still pretty sure our guide Simon was the best. I mean, Simon is seriously one of the best guides we've had, period, in all of our travels. His animal tracking skills were just insane. I swear he has superpowers. He could see through bushes in the dark and spot leopards while he was driving and talking to us. It was incredible. We learned so much from him about the animals and also the local culture. He also never made us feel stupid for asking questions and always gave us great answers. He really went above and beyond and made our safari extra special. And he also ruined us for every safari we had after this because he had set the bar so high. Saruni Samburo also has a dedicated server, or I guess you could say butler, for each room who brings you each meal while you are staying here and it helps you with any food or beverage requests you have during your stay. I mean, the same person will bring you coffee and cookies to your room at 5 a.m. before a morning safari and also serve you lunch, dinner, and any snacks or special beverages that you want throughout the day. Our server's name was also Simon and he was awesome. He was so kind and also went above and beyond to make sure he was always making our stay as comfortable and enjoyable as possible. Now the food at Saruni Simbaro was something I wasn't expecting to be so excited about. I mean, you're pretty much in the middle of nowhere, so my expectations for food weren't that high. So I was so shocked when we had our first meal at Saruni. You have three courses with lunch and dinner, and all of the Saruni lodges have an Italian theme to their dishes, and the food was Unbelievable. It is so tasty and it's presented so beautifully. I wish I had more photos and videos to share of it, but I usually ate it before I thought to take any sort of photo or video of it. Trust me when I say though that the food in and of itself is a reason to stay at Saruni Samburu. It's honestly better than any restaurant I have near me at home for food. And for breakfast, my husband and I were really wanting to maximize the amount of time we spent on our safaris. So we always had our breakfast while we were out on safari. Simon would bring us coffee and cookies to our room at 5 a.m. so we could have a little something before we set out for the day. Then he would pack a picnic and our guide Simon would bring it along and set it up in a safe area by the river for us so we could have this awesome breakfast and watch elephants and giraffes while we sipped our coffee and ate our breakfast. The food they had along too ranged from pancakes to Scottish eggs and bacon, oatmeal, fresh fruits, yogurt, juices. I mean, there was such a variety. It was amazing. One night, Saruni also arranged for us to have dinner under the stars. They set up this elaborate bar and dining area and had a bonfire going for us. They also had a couple of cultural Samburu dances and songs performed for us while we were by the fire. I can't say enough positive things about the staff at Saruti Samburu and the Lodge. It was just an unforgettable experience. But what is a safari like with Saruti Samburu? So if you're just beginning to plan your safari in Kenya, you're probably more familiar with the Masi Mara than Samburu, as that area is much more popular for a safari destination. So just to give you a better idea of Samburu, it's in the northern part of Kenya and it's an arid region that features dramatic hills and mountainous landscapes. You're also going to have the opportunity to, to see different animals in Samburu than you would in the Mara. There are the Samburu Special Five, which bear with me on these pronunciations, I am not Jack Hanna. The Samburu Special Five are the Reticulated Giraffe, the Gravy Zebra, the Somali Ostrich, the Long Neck Giranuk, and the Common Besa Oryx. Compared to the Mara, you're going to get to see an absolute ton of elephants in Simbaro too. There's so many elephants here. I could not get enough of watching the baby elephants play here. 
We seriously spent an entire morning just watching a herd of elephants play and graze, and I don't think I've ever been happier. <laughs> Again, Samburu is also not as popular of a safari destination as the Masimara is in the south, so there are hardly any people here. You really feel like you're in the African wilderness searching for animals when you're here. Whereas the Mara, if you're seeing a cool animal or something exciting is happening, there's likely going to be at least a few other jeeps on top of it too, which makes it feel a little less authentic of an experience, at least it did for me. Another difference, though, is that the Mara is going to have quite a few more big cats than Samburu. I mean, there are lions everywhere in the Masimara. However, in Samburu, there's just a few lions and cheetahs compared to the Masimara. And while the wildlife is more abundant in the Masimara, I personally prefer the safari experience in Samburu with Saroni. It's just amazing to be able to watch the wildlife without a bunch of other people around and to have to work a little more for tracking the animals. Uh, it's just a really unique experience, at least it was for me. You can also do night game drives here. You'll have the chance to see nocturnal animals, which this is another really unique experience. And just to put in perspective how awesome of a guide and tracker Simon is, on our first game drive in Samburu, we saw a female lion who was distraught and crying because she had lost her cubs. It was heartbreaking. The guides were worried that another male lion had killed the cubs and no one had seen them in days. However, on our last game drive with Simon, we were driving and suddenly he slammed on the brakes and got really excited because he spotted these teeny tiny paw prints in the dirt. I mean, they were smaller paw prints than what my house cat makes. He had spotted this while driving and talking to us. He then asked if we wanted to try and track them to see if the cubs had been reunited with their mother. And of course we did. So we looked for her cubs for a few hours and Simon ended up spotting the cubs and their mom curled up together in this really thick bush. It seriously took me 10 minutes of staring at this bush before I could see the lions and I couldn't even get a decent photo or video of them. But it was so cool to see that they were reunited and it was a really high note to end our safari on in Samburu. So how did I find and book Saruni Samburu? I had booked our Kenyan safari through a travel agency called Go to Africa. I'm not the type of traveler who typically uses a travel agency. I like to plan and book everything myself and book directly with tour operators and hotels when possible. But when it came to planning a safari in Kenya, I was completely overwhelmed. There were so many incredible places to stay and so many cool animals to see, I didn't know where to start. Go to Africa was a company that came highly recommended to me from a few fellow travelers, so I reached out to them and was just really impressed with everything they suggested and how professional they were. Uh, Lauren was the safari expert who put this whole thing together for me. She was incredible. Lauren is the reason I had found Saruni Samburu and also stayed at Saruni Rhino in Samburu. Saruni Rhino is where you get to track black rhinos on foot. It is as nuts as it sounds and it's also one of the coolest things I have ever done. But back to booking a stay here. You could reach out to go to Africa and inquire about this trip and see what kind of rates they can get you. I'll put the link in the video description. You could also reach out directly to Saruni Lodges now that you know they exist. I'll put their information in the description as well. Rates for safaris can get a little complicated as there are a lot that goes into them. But to give you a rough idea of how much a night is here, during the time we had stayed here, the base rate per person per night was $700 per person. We stayed here in early February, which is considered their mid-season, so it's not the high season, but it's not the low season either. The rates vary and will obviously increase if you're staying here during the high season. And that base rate includes your transfers, your accommodation, all of your soft drinks, house wines, beers and spirits, your shared day and night game drives, as well as your meals, picnics, and your sundowners. Which a sundowner is your cocktail that you sip while you watch the sun go down. It also includes cultural tours and visits and any hikes you might want to do in the area. As there are also quite a few unique day hikes that you have in Samburu. Bottom line, Saruni Samburu is an incredible place that deserves to be on the top of your bucket list. Traffic jam in Kenya. It's one of the coolest places I have ever stayed, and I'm comparing it to unique places like Draft Manor and also the Treehouse Lodge in Peru. I literally have nothing negative to say about Saruni Samburu other than I just wished I had stayed here longer, but hopefully I'll get to return one day. I don't ever like to go to the same place more than once as there's just so much to see in the world, but I would make an exception with Saruni Samburu as this is an experience that I would gladly repeat.
Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel to get more updates on my time in Kenya.